But they opened the show, and this is Raw for, what, January 15th, I believe it was. On My God, it's been so long now. I've slept since then. But uh, they were actually in North Little Rock. Because here's the, North Little Rock has, has kind of taken over because that's the part of Little Rock that most people want to live in. We used to go to the regular Little Rock, and there wasn't a lot of things to write home about. Was Little Rock the furthest... East town for Mid South Wrestling? Uh, no, no. Furthest east would have been Greenwood and Greenville, Mississippi. But it was the furthest. Technically, we didn't go any really any farther north. I don't know. Greenwood and Greenville on a f-ing line may be a little bit farther north, but it might not be. But that was as far north as Mid South went, unless Tulsa up there. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and, and if you went uh, any farther northeast outside of Little Rock, you were an impinging on Memphis. But anyway, nevertheless, um, here comes Cody, and he gets the chance and the woes and the whole nine yards. And again, I, I hear this. I don't know whether I'm just crazy or whether anybody else can hear it, but his cadence, the attitude, it's dusty without the jive and bigger words. But the way that he's talking, he's, I can see it. I can hear it. And he prefaces, it was a short little deal after what he all want to talk about, which I think he could retire at this point. He's the hottest baby face, maybe in the business now, depending on what side of the fence CM Punk is on. But they don't, they don't just come in their pants to hear that line, do they? No. But I guess he, you know, old habits die hard. But anyway, he prefaced the, this whole thing with the, you know, the thing he came back for to finish the story. The Royal Rumble's around the corner, and then boom, Drew McIntyre music, and out he comes. And not only is he actually interesting now, instead of what was it two years ago, he's waving that fucking sword, cutting the goddamn fake ropes in with with sound <laughs> effects, right? <laughs> but when he comes out now he's got different facials he's got a more heelish demeanor but he's not drawn back and threatening to slap people or cussing them out but he's he's changing his attitude visually as well as uh, you know the material and what he's doing and he gets some booze but he's still you know he's in the middle there but this is a, a not just a slow, gradual change, but also as he's changing the promos now he wrestles, he's changing his, as Howard Finkel used to say, his demeanor also. Instead of being like the indie guys, they go out and they, okay, now I can cheat and yell at the fans and change nothing else. <laughs> he's changing a lot of simple things that people can get and pick up on subliminally. And he's he's talking better than ever. Is it you believe him now with this shit, don't you? I do. I think it's the best stuff he's done. It's the stuff I've enjoyed the most that he's done in WWE just the last few weeks. The problem is, at a certain point, it can't just be one by one. He goes to everyone he has a grievance with, very intensely states it. <laughs> yeah. He thinks something could happen, and then the other person just disrespects him and leaves. Well, I'm not saying it's got not got its loopholes, but when he was doing the promo, he brought up that he and Cody, we, we grew up in WWE together. They were once the WWE Tag Team Champions, the dashing ones. And he said, yeah, Google it. And uh, mercifully, a lot of that stuff's been forgotten, but when it fits like this, when he's tell- they're telling the story, they both left to go make themselves bigger commodities and came back because the WWE called them. And that's the, the point there. So this is history. That's not only on the WWE website, publicly acknowledged. If you want to look for it, it's not just insider website shit. It means something for this story and the way these people fit together. And then he said the last match that he had before he, came back to the WWE, was with Cody. Now, that may be the last match they want to talk about, but I, you might know this. This 
when did we start doing this fiasco together? Probably the, 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 before I, I did the hall of fame in 2017, right? Right. We yes. started doing this together. I started podcasting November, 2015. I started doing your show, I think February, 2016. So, but point being, then you remember this probably you've, you know, put the memory, uh, buried it with the other PTSD things in your life. But I, when I did that Hall of Fame deal, I was already going to be in Orlando and the people at What Culture Pro Wrestling, the big promotion over in England that was spending all that money, had brought me and Jim Ross over to do uh, internet pay-per-view commentary in 2016. My, my, my friend, the young Kenny McIntosh and James Dixon, a few of those guys were working for them at the time. And... Uh, they did a, a couple of good shows with major names. Uh, that the Cody was over there, and I believe Angle was there, I think, and blah, blah, blah. So they were going to do a house show in Orlando, WrestleMania weekend, and asked me if I would do commentary on the tape. Long story short, I did it. Turned out I think they ran the show because a lot of their you know, I don't want to say local guys, but a lot of their homegrown talent and themselves wanted to just say they ran a show in America because it's like this fucking rec center gym set up <laughs> for maybe 400 people and there's 200 there. And they didn't have any of the names they'd had on these big shows that they did in, in England. It was just, it, I think it was a, it's one of those reasons why the company is not currently promoting professional wrestling these days. But the, the one guy that was on the show that was worth it because I saw this local UK wrestler and that local UK wrestler and some guys from Florida, you know, and, and, you know, it was, it was fairly sad. And then all of a sudden, ding, ding, I'm doing an announcing and out comes Drew McIntyre and he's fucking six foot, whatever he's fucking built and he's goddamn it. He can work. And that, and I, oh, God damn it. I can't remember who he worked with, but I think that guy's gone on to be in, UK NXT and maybe even the regular NXT, but nevertheless, I was like, why the fuck is this guy here? We're at WrestleMania and he's working this fucking rec center. And that was the day he made his return debut. If I'm not mistaken, he went right across fucking town and debuted that night. So that would be the last match. And it wasn't with Cody, but nevertheless, I'm picking at nits. Anyway, so back to the interview, too late. Cody said that Drew McIntyre, he had told him all along he was a future champion, and he has been a couple of times. And, you know, so Drew returned to favor. He said, Cody, keep doing what you're doing, and you're going to be the first member of your family to hold that belt over your head or whatever. You will finish your story, but not before I finish mine. So here we go. Now we got more conflict with this Royal Rumble. There, This is like an Agatha Christie novel at this point. And Cody said, we both declared for the Rumble. And you could win, or Jey Uso could win, or CM Punk could win. But I don't plan on letting that happen. And we've both won the Royal Rumble, so you can't count anybody. This is great. And Drew gives him the advice, be himself. Don't try to smile all the time and use the big words and be the real Cody. And Cody fires up and says, I'm not an act. I'm grateful for my, for my second chance and all you do is complain about yours. And again, it's adults kind of halfway arguing with each other about something that you might believe if you were so predisposed. And anyway, um, Drew has to go through some more gripes again with Priest because that's more of his making excuses. Other people cost him things. But baby, baby, basically, baby, but baby, I'm well, telling baby, you what, baby. Now you do sound like Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> but baby, Cody then said, but basically, uh, Drew goes. Uh, Drew says that Mania, the story belongs to Drew McIntyre. 
And Cody says, well, if, if, it's going to be excuses and grievances. And, and finally, he says, and by the way, our last match, who won? Cody did. And he, boom. And again, you've got Cody, you've got Drew, you've got Punk, you've got Orton, you've got Uso. You've got a variety of people at the top of this card now, and they've all, even though some are firmly baby faces, they've been set up to where they've got a legitimate reason to want to be territorial about this thing. I think they're doing a great job. Pat Patterson would love this. What do you think? Oh, I really like this. I thought this was a good opening. Another great segment with Drew McIntyre. The punk one was really good. Uh, this one, I guess the Seth Rollins one too. Cody's I, better. I forgot about Franklin. You got Franklin in there too. Cody is better when he interacts with someone and there's some tension between them than when he's just giving speeches on his own. He does that yes. well. But by the way, the, you know, so what do you guys want to talk about? He knows it's dead now and he can't drop it. He's stuck. Cause even now when he delivers it, he's like, so what do you want to talk about? Like he can't yeah. deliver it the way he used to because it'll just be silence. Now he's trying to, at least pick people up in tone. I don't know what, but Drew's been good. You're waiting for the big heel turn, the big heel moment of him just being the big heel. The big now, heel. Now Drew, um, not Drew, but uh, Damian Priest is still after him, obviously on this show, and that's the biggest heel group on the program. Well, but at the same point, how long will Priest be in that group? Because there's tension there, and one would think that he wouldn't be the only heel and the rest of them would be the baby face if they, if there's a split. So it, 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 they've, they've somehow managed to create all this tension among people where there's a few things with the judgment day. I'm not a fan of interacting with some of the silliness and whatever, but you know, sooner or later priest will be the one that they will get grumpy with or something will happen. You can tell they're doing this for a reason, but until then, you know, it's to their own benefit to be together and they're self-serving heels. So there's a lot of things they can do and a lot of moving parts and they've managed to make it all kind of halfway make sense. And there's so many intriguing things in the rumble that like you could start thinking about who's going to make you groan when they come out. Like, oh no, it's this person, not one of these <laughs> other people that are all in some kind of weird conflict that's never explained. But there's a lot of intrigue now. And Drew has multiple interactions with people. Punk promised to eliminate him last, last week. Yeah. This is the best. I, I say it's the best Drew McIntyre has been in WWE to me. It's just been weeks. And he was the former world champion who beat, I think, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. But he's interesting right now. But And he's been able to bring that in, too, because, yeah, I was the champion with no people. So he wants to, to do it right this time. And, you you know, you have to agree with that. And, and then right now, there's no reason to rush the heel turn because if you, you kind of know that you can't really trust him, but you don't really know for sure what it is. So, fuck, just don't let it get old, but it's not old yet. You just got to hope they don't do something like classic WWE and stupid. Like all of a sudden in the midst of this, they're like, you know what? Just go feud with Sheamus for six months. <laughs> but you know what? This ain't classic WWE anymore. And I'm not talking about the classic WWE of the 80s and 90s. I'm talking about classic WWE of the past 10 years. And, you know, Vince has been relieved. And Triple H is is obviously trying to make at least some of this shit, not all of it, unfortunately, to Zawa, but most of it or some of it more adult and more like wrestling and the personalities instead of just, you know, Vince's weird bodily function fetish gimmicks and things. A weird bodily function. Shit, was that your bodily function noise? I just relieved myself. And I'm going to sign myself to an NDA. You know, I guarantee you, if if somebody had told him the idea that that woman had when she drove cross country to fuck up her astronaut boyfriend is to make time she wore the adult diapers so she wouldn't have stop and piss if somebody had told vince that on pay-per-views i bet he would have had the announcers what is this wearing them. what is this story you didn't hear that 
How about this the astronaut? Se- no. Several years ago, there was a goddamn. <laughs> no, I'm 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 not swerving you. There was an astronaut, and there were two of them. The woman was an astronaut in training, and they had been in the space program, and they had an affair, and I can't remember the detail. It didn't end well or whatever, and she w- went to kill him and drove from some ridiculous distance like Colorado or Texas nonstop to Florida so that she could try to establish an alibi and get there and kill him and come back or whatever, and she wore, eventually confessed that she wore adult diapers so she didn't have to stop to piss on the, on the drive on the way over there to kill the uh, fellow astronaut. And that's been the news. Yeah, yeah again, another news story that we missed uh, here somehow. I don't know how you live without staying informed on the major news stories. Hands and pockets and astronauts and... I got one hand in my pocket, and the other one is on the remote control. What was that so, voice? What was the voice? I mean... That's uh, Alanis Morissetti. That was nothing like Alanis Morissetti. <laughs> is that her song? I guess maybe yeah, it's her song. It, well, it's mine now. I've taken it over. You sure have. <laughs> <laughs>